I'd like to call the town board meeting of October 22nd, 2024 to order. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence to remember those who served our country in the past and for those who continue to protect our country today. Thank you. Please note the emergency exits are the door you came in and the door behind us. At this time, I make a motion to continue the public hearing on Local Law 2, 2024, enacting a temporary moratorium on all battery energy storage system facilities at... Six o'clock. Six o one. Six o one. It's six o'clock. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use this clock. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. No one has come for the public hearing to talk. Um, did anyone send in written comments? No. No. Okay. Would anything anybody like to talk about the moratorium? on battery energy storage system facilities. Okay. Then I make a motion at this time to close the public hearing on local law number two, 2024, enacting a temporary moratorium on all battery energy storage system facilities at? 601. 601. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to have a public um, report from Clifford Schwark, who is our CAC chairman. Yep, you're on, Cliff. Welcome. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Everybody's here to hear me speak. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm Clifford Fork. I'm the uh, chairman of the Town of Beekman Conservation Advisory Committee, the CAC. I'm going to be talking more to you people than, than you people. Okay. Uh, now, the, the CAC's job is to advise the town board the planning board and the zoning boards and the public on matters in, involving uh, the environment. So now, I'm sure many of you would agree with me that most of the news <coughs> that we seem to get today is <coughs> bad news. And, you know, we got war, we have uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, murders, and so forth. Uh, even the local news seems to be bad news most of the time. Now, I'd like today to give you some good news. And concerning our town of Beekman, uh, that the local media just seemed to fail to cover for some reason. About seven years ago, I got a phone call from an organization called Land for Public Use. They wanted to buy some land in Southern Beacon. Well, I never heard of this organization, so I invited them to come to one of my CAC meetings and to find out who they were. Uh, I also invited the supervisor since it involves some purchase of land. So I found, we found out that they are a nonprofit organization uh, and they get their money from grants and donations. Their mission is to buy environmentally sensitive land, turn it over to organizations that will protect it, uh, such as parks, schools, forests, uh, and, and uh, th things like that. In this case, they needed 500 acres all in one block, <coughs> not separate pieces, in order to establish a state forest. 
This was a DEC requirement, Department of Environmental uh, Agency requirement. They had to be have five, 500 acres. Now you can imagine how difficult that was to buy 500 acres. First, they had to negotiate with the landowners to get them to be willing to sell their land. Then once they got that, they had to also establish a price with these people, which is a very difficult thing also to do. Uh, now, and there were, and on top of that, there were many other requirements, such as all the uh, uh, boards involved here ha held meetings because there were subdivisions of land required and things like that. So all the boards had to uh, uh, approve various subdivisions and dividing of land. I happened to speak at many of them, trying to keep encouraging the people and the boards to uh, keep approving this land so we could end up with this, with this forest, okay? So uh, after that was done, then they had to negotiate with the Department of Environmental Conservation for a price for them to buy this, these properties. Another issue involved. Okay, after seven long years, I, along with a number of state officials, heads of a number of environmental organizations, attended the ribbon cutting ceremony where DEC announced the formation of the Great Powell New York State Forest. Let me tell you a little bit about this property and this forest. Uh, first of all, it connects into the Appalachian Trail. So it makes it a nice corridor between the Appalachian Trail and, and this particular forest. Uh, it has, on it, on it, it has streams, ponds, wetlands, swamps, and steep slopes. It has a lot of nice forests, trees. It has a number of beautiful meadows. Uh, and this is the kind of property that we want to preserve, not, not develop. And it also, also concerns, uh, con concerns, it also contains a lot of nice wildlife. For instance, deer, bear, coyotes, wildcat, beavers, and so on and so forth. Also waterfowl, geese, ducks, uh, blue heron, and also, of course, many, many songbirds. Now, this forest also will be used for fishing, hiking, camping, hunting, bird watching, and so forth. Now, the important part of this whole thing is that this 500 and five acre forest will no longer be available for develop, development. And it will be available for future generations to enjoy long after all of us are not here anymore. This is good news. And I thank the board for letting me report this good news. And uh, I, I thank you for that. If anybody has any questions on this later, I'd be glad to stay at the end of this meeting and I will try to answer them if I can. Thank you, Clifford. We okay. really appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you, Clifford. And now we have Tom Smith from EFPR Group to give us our independent audit presentation. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we issued the financial statements on July 9th of 2024. Uh, this audit presentation is as of December 31st, 2023. Uh, as part of that audit, we did issue clean or unmodified opinions on the financial statements, as well as we issued a report on the town's internal controls, as well as reporting on their compliance with laws and regulations. We did not have any matters of that nature to note. Uh, in the general fund, your fund balance increased by $80,000 from the prior year to a total of $4.3 million. 
That is mostly generated by an increase of revenue over expenses, expenses from the prior year. A lot of that is generated through an increase in interest revenue through interest rates increasing. So at the end of 2023, your unassigned fund balance represents 55% of the general fund expenditures. That just shows that the general fund is in a very healthy financial position going forward. The highway fund increased by $270,000 to a balance of $942,000. And very similarly, its revenues exceeded your expenses. And the fund balance is 43% of the subsequent year budget. Again, the highway fund is also in a very healthy financial position. The capital projects fund expended a little over a million dollars in the current year. And you see that for town hall recreational park improvements. On the following page, you'll also note there are three other funds. The Special Recreation Fund increased by a little over $2,000, and the Sewer and Water District actually had a decrease in the current year. Uh, a couple other things to note, we did look at the Town Justice Court that was audited as well. We did not come across any issues there that did have a clean on modified opinion. And we did want to highlight the, the American Rescue Plan money with the COVID relief fund money from the federal government. There was $800,000 expended to date, and there is approximately $688,000 left on that grant that you have a couple more years to be able to spend that. So really, I want to turn it to the board if you have any questions on the audit or the bank, the same as I could possibly answer. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Now we've gone over it with your time. Thank you. Um, whenever you come, this is, works out really well. Um, you work so well with our, our finance department, and we appreciate that. Um, Everyone works very hard to put the independent order together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, let's see. I'm just going to run through the resolutions. Uh, resolution number four is adopting the local law that we just closed the public hearing for, for the moratorium. Resolution number five is amending the 2025 tentative budget and filing the 2025 preliminary budget. Resolution number six is establishing a capital project for the town salt shed repairs. Um, just before the meeting, we um, Craig sent me the agreement, so we have the agreement and uh, it'll be on the next agenda. We've been working on that for a year and a half. Uh, we have a board appointment to the CAC. Uh, Suzette Lopain, her um, credentials were impeccable. Clifford um, had had a conversation with her and um, was very interested in having her join. She's a landscape architect and a principal planner in urban design for Westchester County Planning. Um, and has her degree in landscape architecture from Cornell University. So she's a wonderful addition to the CAC, and um, I think Cliff will enjoy working with her. We have the board appointment to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, Colleen Hayes is going to be reappointed um, to the Assessment Review. And then we have the payment of claims that um, from the highway, uh, we're paying Clove Excavators $160,405.44. From the capital fund, we're paying for the um, Swim Pond Weir $193,883.14. We're transferring grant funds received for the capital project $100,000. We're transferring funds due to the general fund for the bridge project grant advance, um, $10,000. Uh, the general fund, um, we have a voucher for transfer for the ARPA account to the Newtown Center Capital Improvement, and a voucher transfer for the ARPA account to the new Doherty Park Capital Improvement. And then, and then we have the um, payment of claims. So I'm going to see who, let me get the sign-in sheet. For the agenda, Jason. Okay. Jason. Mm -hmm. 
Jason Abitano, 20, 20 Gabriel's Path. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief. We've got a packed house. Um, it's obviously a lot of stuff. I think a lot of people wanted to speak tonight. Um, briefly, I just wanted to tell everybody thank you for, again, the continued support. Thank you for participation. Thank you for showing up. This is where change is made. This is where things happen. This is where you know, we voice our opinions, what we agree with, what we don't agree with. Um, one other thing, just reiterating again, remember you got your proposition, do your research, make sure you guys understand what we're voting for or not voting for, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you to do your research, choice is yours, make the right decision. Thank you once again for everybody for your support, we truly appreciate it. Doug DeMassey. October, Gray Brown spoke, and he said he's very well paid, he's uh, salary, he loves his job, he gives three, four, five hundred hours a year for nothing, no problem. Then, when I constantly complained about it, about a year and a half later, <coughs> Paul Ackman stood up here and he said, that's uh, $40,000 before over time, we face kind of trading challenge. Didn't think. Life oiled this a number of times. Never got anything. And when questioned about a year and a half later, Mary refused to answer any questions. Later on, Greg Brown wanted to be back at $40,000. The town wouldn't take it back. Recently, not recently, a while ago, I filed a lawsuit against the town to know where the $40,000 went. In the Pepsi Court, they wanted to dismiss it, the judge says no. I'm suing the town with the individual board members, Barbara Zubal, uh, Mike Pecchio, Eric Lucci, and Jill, and more of a the board, the $5,000. So I do prevail, I'm due to $5,000. Half of it to the Church of St. Dennis Food Bank, and half to the Iconic uh, Towers. I don't know the other board members. I know Sharon. I don't know the other ones. I do know this. Mary, Gucci, and Joe are not honest. They are really not honest. And when I foiled for stuff, they would blow me off. They wouldn't give me stuff. When I foiled for a great round of paychecks from July 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2017, I got them right away, no problem. And it showed this one check. When I lost it in my home, I couldn't find it. I pulled for it again. And Rachel gave me the package. But what was missing from that packet was all the checks from July 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2017. And I've said it before. I don't 
trust Mary Kabuchi and Jill. I don't know the other board members, I can't say any of that. But I do know from hundreds, 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 hundreds percent certified that fact that they are not honest and they can't be trusted. And this is a proof. If Ray Brown honestly earned this forty thousand dollars, why do you ever <coughs> say Ray Brown forty thousand dollars and have for the vacation time that he was missing and the overtime that he was missing? So I had to do it. So it's that simple guy and honest. So I've said it before, other board members, I don't trust them. Now I don't trust them yesterday, I won't trust them tomorrow. Thank you. To Lauren, please make copies. This is a packet of other town officials who have been arrested for stealing 12,000, 5,000, right on up. I'll be at your office probably in a day or two. Can you please make copies? And those you can put in a record. Okay. Thank you. Joseph. Joseph Gian Grande, I'm the owner of Jolie Brower Greenhouse and Farm right around the corner here on 1127 Route 216. And uh, a couple months ago, before you mentioned that uh, Ruth Hogan had turned 100 years old. And that's who I had purchased my farm. Oh, sorry. I just want to mention uh, from Ruth Hogan, that's where I had purchased my farmland here. So I tried to raise a family for the last 25 years. So we're just uh, going to have a free event this weekend. And if anybody wants to come by and check and see what we're all about, we're trying to create jobs and save and preserve open space and farmland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bill Crane. Bill. Bill Crane, 254 Gardner Hollow Road. Um, I would ask that um, my fellow citizens refrain from ad hominem accusations. Uh, that the issues, we can talk about issues and facts, but calling somebody dishonest or calling them a name, name calling, I, I just, I, I think just if we could just stick to the principles, facts, and issues it would be better for the whole community. So that's my two cents on the, on the issue, mm -hmm. on that issue. Um, we wouldn't like somebody to call us dishonest or, you know, or other names to, you know, just say I disagree on this, this happened, this happened. Uh, I want to congratulate um, Cliff, um, Cliff and the CAC for the contribution contributions and I, I appreciate the support he's getting uh, for the great great hollow forest and I appreciate the emphasis on the wildlife we tend to forget that other species want uh, have a place on this earth and want to live as much as we do and it, it's nice to hear that once in a while and I hope the board will consider joining groups uh, jo applying for state uh, climate smart and um, Tree City and other groups that could give more support, get grant support for acquiring and protecting uh, more, more of na natural land. And um, I also want to uh, say that um, uh, Suzette Lopain is uh, a terrific person, a terrific addition and very knowledgeable about the environment. And th th that'll be a good move for that, uh, for that excellent committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're ready to start. Okay. Great. We're going to start with number four. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, adopting Local Law 2 of 2024. Whereas the Town of Beekman Town Board is desirous of passing a local law to place a temporary moratorium on all battery energy storage system facilities. And whereas New York State law provides that a public hearing must be conducted prior to the passage of such a local law. And whereas the town board of the town of Beekman duly called and held the public hearing at Beekman Town Hall, 4 Main Street, Poquig, New York, 12570, 
on the 8th day of October 2024 and on the 22nd day of October 2024 upon the question of the enactment of the local law number two of 2024 of the town of Beekman, Dutchess County, New York, being such a local law. And whereas in accordance with part 617.5 C26, State Environmental Quality Review Seeker, the adoption of this local law is classified as a type two action and not subject to environmental review under CEQA. Now therefore, it is resolved and ordained by the town board of the town of Beekman that the local law two of 2024 of the town of Beekman in Dutchess County, New York is hereby enacted as follows and is effective upon its filing with the New York State Department of State. I will second that. The town board discussion. I think this will give us time to educate ourselves on the topic and see which way we're going to go. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's um, roll call vote. Councilman, I'm sorry, Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Benalini? Aye. Councilman Lemack? Aye. Councilman Warman? Aye. Supervisor Gucci? <coughs> Aye. Resolution passed. Resolution number five, amend to 2025 tentative budget and file 2025 preliminary budget. Whereas 2025 tentative budget was filed with the town clerk on September 30th, 2024 and presented to the town board on September 30th, 2024. And whereas the town board has reviewed the amended 2025 tentative budget and will conduct a public hearing on the 2025 preliminary budget on November 6, 2024 at 6.15 p.m. Now therefore be it resolved that the following amendments are approved to be made to the 2025 tentative budget and filed as the 2025 preliminary budget as follows. I'll second that. Town board discussion. Um, the preliminary budget going to have a tax rate decrease of 18 cents per thousand assessed valuation or 52,000 reduction, $52 reduction for the average residential property. Um, it's the first tax decrease in many years and it's due to us having a very healthy fund balance that Tom Smith had um, remarked on. Can we have roll call vote please? Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Benalini? Aye. Councilman Lemack? Aye. Councilman Warman? Aye. Supervisor Cavucci. Aye. Resolution passed. Whereas the town salt shed is in need of structural and electrical repairs, and whereas the town and county are negotiating a joint agreement for the construction and usage of the building, and whereas the town and county have agreed to share equally in the costs of the building repairs, engineering, and other expenses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Beekman authorizes the creation of the salt shed repairs capital project for the town's portion of 250000 with a transfer in from the general fund. I'll second. Town board discussion. We'll have the agreement on the next meeting. Roll call vote. Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Benalini? Aye. Councilman Lemack? Aye. Councilman Warman? Aye. Supervisor Cavucci? Aye. Resolution passed. Whereas the town board will make appointments to various boards, and whereas a vacancy exists on the uh, Conservation Advisory Board, and the chairman has interviewed and recommended the following appointment. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Beekman Town Board does hereby make the following appointment. Suzette Lopane to the CAC with a term to expire December 31st, 2025. Be it further resolved that all appointments are contingent <coughs> upon completion and submission of the disclosure of interest statement pursuant to Chapter 19-9 of the Town Code, unless already on file and the information has not changed. And be it further resolved that all appointees shall file their oath of office with the town clerk of the town of Beekman prior to serving their term. I will second that. Town board discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Benalini? Aye. Councilman Lee Mack? Aye. Councilman Warman? Aye. Supervisor Cavucci? Aye. Resolution passed. Whereas the town board will make appointments to the various boards, and whereas Colleen Hayes' term on the board of assessment review expired as of 9 30, 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Colleen Hayes be reappointed to the Board of Assessment Review with a term to expire 9-30-2029, and be it further resolved that all appointments are contingent upon completion and submission of the disclosure of interest statement pursuant to Chapter 19-9 of the Town Code, unless already on file and the information has not changed, complete all necessary requirements of the bid of the position be it further resolved that all appointments shall file their oath of office with the town clerk of the town of Beekman within 30 days of their appointment. I'll second. Town board discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Bellini? Aye. Councilman Lemack? Aye. Councilman Warman? Aye. Supervisor Covici? Aye. Resolution passed. Uh, resolution 9, uh, payment of claims. Whereas the bookkeeper has audited and approved claims pursuant to section 119 of town law as set forth in the attached abstracts, be it resolved that the payment therefore is hereby authorized as follows. Claims to be paid from the A general fund, $498,616.67. Claims to be paid from the DA highway fund, $220,861.25. Claims to be paid from the SS Dover Ridge Sewer, $446.90. Claims to be paid from the SW Dover Ridge Water, $56. Claims to be paid from the T Trust Fund, $6,896.55. Claims to be paid from the H Capital Fund, $304,284.14 for a total of $1,031,161.54. The 10-10-24 payroll number 21 in the general fund of $37,288.11. And the highway fund, $23,155.47 for a total of $60,443.58. I will second that. Town board discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Councilman Capillary? Aye. Councilman Benellini? Aye. Councilman Lemack? Aye. Councilman Norman? Aye. Supervisor Cavucci? Aye. Resolution passed. Okay, uh, our next regular town board meeting is going to be Wednesday, November 6th at 6 p.m. We have a public hearing for Dover Ridge assessments at 610 and a public hearing for the preliminary budget at 615. Right now we'll have the general board comments. Okay, we're going to have public comments. Let's start with Vince. So I just, I wanted to do one thing. I just wanted to tell everybody, in case you haven't seen, um, Barton Orchards is having a big fundraiser for one of our local deputy sheriffs, Nick, Nick Gaspari. Um, he's a sheriff who has cancer. Um, and as a community, Barton's is putting um, it on you know, for him and all proceeds will go to Nick and his family and his baby girl at six months. If you guys are interested, Please show up. It's at Barton's, and you can pay at the door. It's $75 a ticket. And um, just please, he's one of our local residents, so if, if we could all support him, that would be great. What is that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's this Friday um, at 5. It starts at 5. Okay, public comments. Vince? Barton, you said, right? Barton, 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 Barton Orchards. And it's $75 ahead. To get in per person. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Vincent Sento. I live in Dalton Farms. I have a lot of issues and questions that I would like answered, but there's one topic I want to touch on. I wasn't here for the last meeting, but September 24th meeting, I found ridiculous. The whole board, every one of you, sat there for 10 minutes each bashing the town, the highway supervisor with the same goddamn accuser. Then, you had John, the head of the planning board, come up here, never signed in, came at the end of the meeting, started bashing the town clerk. And then he proceeded to get into a face nose to nose, which I intervened because you don't talk to a woman like that, prodding her to hit him. So I got in his face to get him away from her, and he in turn kicked me in the groin, and I want him removed from the board and any other future board that he might want to be served on here. I don't think there's a place for anybody like that on the board that talks to women or a resident of this town. And I vote no on Proposition 3. Thank you. Lori? 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 Lori Sento, I live on Vandenberg Road in Dalton Farm, and I just want you to be aware I will be voting no for Proposition 3 and keeping my right to vote. Thank you. <laughs> Holly O'Dell. Holly O'Dell. Good 
I'm Holly O'Dell, I live on Lime Mill Road, and I basically put my name down because you made it very clear in the last couple meetings that you really don't want to hear what we have to say, and if I don't have my name down, you're all going to walk out anyway and not listen. Um, I just want to say as far as the proposi proposition goes, of course I'm going to be voting no. We've had in the last 10 to 15 years uh, several appointed people that have used our taxes as their own personal ATMs. And I really don't trust anybody appointing them, at least if we vote for them, we take the onus on that as well. But we've seen what appointments can do. They steal from our budget, they steal from our taxes, and I vote no. Um, also, I have a question with the deputies that people have to help them with. Uh, now, Lorraine, I know, had lost her full-time deputy for the supervisor's use, and she got a part-time one. She's taken on two full-time jobs that she hadn't signed up for originally, and especially at tax time, this is very taxing work. Um, and I just think it's Mickey Mouse stuff to, uh, we're not in middle school, we're not children. If you're gonna retaliate against the town, the highway department having overtime, or try to set up your people to fail, you're doing a good job. Nancy Lyon. Nancy Lyon, I live at 15 Dove Court. Um, I kind of feel exactly the way Holly feels. Um, we are both very supportive of Laureen. Um, yesterday, we volunteered our time to go in and assist her uh, with stamping the tax receipts and folding them, and it's, it's a tedious job. Uh, to know that Mary has now Sharon as a deputy and a full-time secretary, and to have Laureen's deputy uh, position put down to part-time just doesn't make sense. It seems vindictive, it seems, it seems wrong. Um, I, why, why are you doing that? And if you tell me it's about money, I can't listen to it. When you got that $50,000 Jeep sitting outside that I've never seen move. It sits there again and again and again. I'm through here all the time. I don't understand it. Another concern I have, which probably seems petty, but a lot of us in the audience don't always hear you. I find it kind of like annoying that every one of you appears to be hiding behind your monitors. You know, like... <laughs> really, there are people who can read lips. Why, why, are you, why do they need to be there? Are they really that necessary? or raise your chairs up, I mean, so we can see you. I, I wrote a letter, I asked in the letter, we, we the people of Beekman voted for you people, which I applaud you for your civic efforts. I do, I think it takes a lot of effort to do what you do. But once you got in office, it was like you went deaf and blind to all of us and, and I don't, I don't, in addition to not liking these monitors, you need to change something that when you discuss something on your agenda for the evening, we sign up to, to speak, but sometimes, like, I may not have a comment, but if you may bring something up during that meeting that I want to address, there should be that, that time available. And the three-minute thing is ridiculous. So... I, I think you need to think about those things. Kathy Denton. Hello, Kathy Denton. I live at 3 Main Street, right across the street. My family has lived here for the past 17 years, and my husband grew up here. I would just like to say I'm not one for speaking out. I don't like drama but I have made some observations that I feel I need to address. <sighs> I may not have all the facts, 
but just a few of my observations, and there's only a few here, because there's a lot I would like to say, but I'm limited to three minutes. The town hall update project. I'm not sure if it was grant, paid, whatever. While we appreciate all the new improvements here, this was an eyesore project that went on for well over two years. I don't know how many times we had to redo ramps and all that, but uh, I find that cost savings, things that are talked about with Tony, um, that's been left and forgotten about. Um, most upsetting to me during this whole update was the fact that the lights on the flags out front of this building were unlit for well over a year as well. And that is a law. So that's very upsetting to me. The previous town maintenance crew, Greg, is missed terribly. He did a fabulous job and you went out of your way and you hired an outside landscaping company. Where is the cost savings in that? I miss him. I think he was fabulous. He, he seemed to work 24-7, making our whole town look beautiful. And I know this may sound silly, but even decorating around the holidays, it's just not the same. Which brings me to the lovely generator project. You cut down trees over a year in advance of this eyesore project. And what makes me crazy is the fact that the town hall is not an emergency service place. Why, in God's name, would you not have the, the town highway department on the generator? They are the ones that are here handing out dry ice, handing out water. They are here for us for no matter what is the emergency, they're here for us. So why is a generator project take precedence over hooking it up to the town highway department? Um, and since you've taken over, Mrs. Cavucci, I also wonder what happened to our beautiful community day. I applaud the, the rec department, puts on concerts in the park. She also does the fall festival, which is very nice. But where, was, where is our big community day that culminated in fireworks? Everybody, all the businesses in town used to come to it. What happened to that? And that, and that was supposedly cost savings as well. I miss a, I miss a small town feel. It's gone. Um, in my opinion, and again, my opinion, the two big town events that still take place, which I adore, are the Town Memorial Day Parade and Town Dump Day, as silly as that sounds. Um, which brings me to this. The Memorial Day Parade is organized and put together solely by Laureen. She does a fabulous job, and she should be applauded for all of her efforts, and I thank you for pointing out that she's taken on more than one job and being her deputy has been taken away from her it's ridiculous um i applaud everything that you do laureen you, you. are transparent you're available to the whole town and the now to my second favorite dump day <laughs> which again i believe i could be wrong is a hundred percent tony Coviello. Um, these are two things that are done as I consider give backs to the town. We pay a lot of taxes, um, and I just find that it, it's funny that the two things that are run that I think are the best are, have nothing to do with you. It's Laureen and Tony. So why you're going against them, I don't understand. Um, and I will be honest with you, I have not taken a part in town board meetings aside from when we went up against the cell tower. But I have attended the last three and I am appalled at the lack of transparency here. Um, why do we schedule a budget agenda meeting before most people come home from work? I don't understand. Furthermore, to adjourn meetings without hearing from all concerned citizens because they haven't signed up on a sheet, I think is ridiculous. Is this how all town boards work? You are elected to represent us the people. Um, so why shouldn't you be, sit here and have to answer our questions? There's a sign-up sheet, time limits, I don't get it. Why can't you just listen to us? Um, and I will 100% be voting no for Proposition 3. I refuse to have my right to vote for elected officials that are deserving and accountable and accessible be taken away from me. So I look forward to 2025 and making a change to the current board. I'm not going to be silent anymore. Thanks. Sharon Pratt. Hi. 
Sharon Pratt, 40 Sawmill Run, uh, Dalton Farms. I've been attending the meetings also. I've also been appalled. But I have to tell you, everyone's been very eloquent. Hi, folks out there in TV land. I hope to God you're all watching. Please be informed. Please find your homework. Ask your neighbors. Get on Beekman Positive. Ask anyone here. Get as much information as you can and vote no on Proposition 3. What was just eloquently stated, well, also about you too, Lorene, but about Tony. We can't have someone handpicked by a board member when we have someone who has been proficient in his job, is available, listens, and does his job well, has never had uh, Do me a favor, please. Get as much information as you can. You need to be educated. So many people have stated so many things that have been wrong. Um, they're not allegations, they're not accusations. There has been proof, documentation, and legally documented. Please do your homework. I love this town. I moved here from, from a town I was very active in. I thought I was gonna come here and just spend time with my daughter and in my garden. Ugh, alas, no. One of the meetings that was mentioned, someone did, a planning board member, did kick an individual, and I happen to be the person where the leg went through, so I can testify to that. But please, more of you need to come out here. This is a packed room. I attended a meeting where everybody got up and left, and the room was packed. We need to have our freedom to be heard. We're in America. We have the right to vote. We have the right to elect Tony again. They want to take that right away from us, and I am really angry. I know my ancestors fought to vote, and they may not think this is important, but they're taking our vote away. And we need to be educated. I'm really sorry, I, 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 my time will be up, I know, but everyone has been so eloquently giving you truth. And it's not hogwash, please. I don't have time for drama. Unfortunately, I've been coming because this is truly, truly important to everyone who lives in Beekman. Again, thank you, Sharon Pratt. I live in Dalton. Eric? Eric? Eric Verhoff, uh, 15 Hillside Road, a uh, longtime resident of Beekman. I've lived here with my family for 28 years now, um, and I care deeply about the town and what happens here. I, too, like many of the others here, have been very disheartened by what I've seen at recent meetings, public meetings. Um, I've attended several of the recent town board meetings and public hearings, uh, particularly the public hearing that was held regarding the change to the highway superintendent position. Uh, that night, the room was packed, twice as many people as I think that are here tonight. Uh, over two dozen people got up and spoke, um, um, every one of them opposing the law, nobody in support of it. And there was also, from what I understand, a petition with over 600 signatures that was submitted to the town board also opposing the law. After the public hearing was completed and everybody was done speaking, the board did not even acknowledge what people had said or, or what the concerns were. Not a thank you for your input, we'll take it under advisement, not a thank you for your input, but, and then response to the comments and questions that were made. So it was basically no acknowledgement that we were even here or speaking. You just had, you did it because it was required to do, and then you closed the public meeting and voted to pass the law anyway. To me, that does, just does, does not sit well. Um, and, and from what I've understood, it happened at rather recent meetings. I wasn't at the meeting that you spoke about. That kind of uh, activity just can't exist and shouldn't happen here. So um, also, the, the seems to, one of the main reasons that you're proposing this change is for cost savings. Where are those cost savings coming from? I've seen no information or data to show where those cost savings might come from. I looked at the town website. There was facts posted, which is basically just a copy of, this, of the PowerPoint presentation that was presented. Those aren't really facts, more opinions and hopes. And <clears throat> there was a, a list of uh, a fiscal analysis that was posted that's not really fiscal analysis. It's a list of prior one-time expenses that the town incurred. Nothing about recurring expenses, future savings, future cost savings, future reductions to the budget because of the supposed cost savings from this, from this change. 
So I want to know before I vote as an informed citizen, and you're asking us to vote in less than two weeks now, or in about two weeks, on this new law, we don't have enough information to make an informed decision. We don't know where those expected cost savings are going to come from. Um, and without that, to me, there's no other, doesn't seem to be any valid reason to make the change, especially when we have a highway department that has been functioning very well for the last more than a dozen years. Um, and I, I don't see where there's a reason to make a change at this point. So again, as of everybody else here, I will be voting no. Um, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Crane. Take your time, Bill. Yes. I hope the board will listen to the comments about um, public participation. I'm a strong believer in democracy. The, the elected officials should reflect the will of the people. Um, the right to vote is essential. A lot of people have suffered, given their lives for the, the right to vote. Black people, women. It's, it's not something that just came out of the blue. Um, so it's, a, it's an important issue. I do want to say that I'm very happy that the agendas have come out ahead of time the last two meetings. It has been very hard when the, the, to, to, when the agenda has come out at the last minute for the public to know what's going on and what's going to be there and, uh, and make their plans. And it puts a, it puts a damper on participation. So the, the board has shown that it can be it, it, can, it can make progress, because every institution needs to make progress, and uh, I don't want to sound you know, like attacking this board, but we do need to keep fighting for democracy in this country. Thank you. Tom Mullen. We start the three minutes. We have a safety issue. We I know. Hundreds of That's, bees. I, I do understand. So if anybody here yeah. has a bee allergy, be aware. If you knew that was there, you should have made That's that. That's why we have the push to take that. Yeah, but th but there's okay. there's no way anyone would know. <clears throat> okay, so anybody else? We did. They did. There's, there's signs all over. Okay. We didn't put you three minutes. Okay. Go ahead. The primary function of elected officials is to be responsible to the constituents to which they serve. We had three specific issues in Dalton Farm that necessitated speaking with the highway superintendent. First was an excessive speed issue, which resulted in the necessity for installing new speed limit signs on Fordington Road. The study was asked for and started within 24 hours. It went for seven days. Ten days from there, the superintendent of highways installed new speed limit signs. Most recently, a phone call was made to Tony Coviello regarding our catch basins and how they were failing and collapsing. The next day, his crew was out and they did a great job. Over two weeks, they've repaired and reset every catch basin on Roosevelt Drive, as well as cleaning them. An appointed individual would have no responsibility to us as constituents. Their only responsibility would be to the people to my left. Something would be generated for work to be done, and as we see with dealing with the people to my left, there's procrastination and there's no response to any of our concerns. So to take away an elected position, we would lose the ability to have emergency responses from the highway department to take place. So how does this happen? It is our fault, all of us sitting here. Our apathy, each election has allowed this to fester. This is unacceptable to come to a meeting and never have an avenue of discussion on an issue. Okay. We are insignificant 
to this group of individuals. So, one, we have to defeat the proposition in regards to not having an elected position for town highway superintendent, and we have 12 months for everyone to get together to begin a process to remove three of these five in 2025. That's our goal. Kate Blake. Hi, everyone. Kate Blake, 231 Clap Hill Road. Thank you to the highway folks for being out there uh, mowing the grass today. I saw you guys out there, appreciate it. I'd like to preface my written comments by asking why there are only three years of budget history on the website. It makes it difficult to review prior financial activity, and I'd like to recommend the board consider reinstating those lost budget documents to the public facing site. In the board's official comments posted to the Town of Beekman Facebook page on September 25th, there is extensive discussion of compensation. That piqued my interest, so I did a little research. In the 2023 budget, it lists $20,436 for supervisor labor. We've heard so often about how much cost savings there is, right? But $33,350 for supervisor staff, for a total of $53,786 for labor related to town supervisor activities. I expect the supervisor salary to be listed in the financial report for 2023, but no such report <laughs> exists on the website. Is it coming? Prior year's annual financial reports show delivery dates in May, with revisions if needed and occurring in October. What happened? Why is it late? Absent this data, I'm left wondering. In 2017, the financial report listed supervisor-related labor costs as $62,357. What this indicates to me is that while the supervisor salary has gone down significantly when looked at as isolation, those costs and labor hours have not disappeared as suggested by the board in the September 25th communication, but have been allocated elsewhere within the budget. And we can see that per our 2025 tentative budget, that additional cost appears to be, again, $33,350 for additional supervisor-related labor. What puzzles me further is the elaborate attempt that the board has made to publicly minimize the total cost of labor associated with the supervisor functions, while also providing comparatively inflated data regarding the highway supervisor on those very same metrics. I can show this in action. Page four of the September 25th board comments report the highway superintendent's comp inclusive of total rewards. That's like benefits like pension and medical. On page seven of the board's very same official comments, the supervisor and board's comp is listed excluding this additional comp. Why would the board, they themselves, create, release, and promote a misleading apples to oranges salary comparison? Is it a lack of understanding of data analysis or intentional malfeasance? Without additional information, and without the relevant budget information on the website, it's impossible to know what occurred in reality. But the very public and misleading salary comparison, taken in hand with obfuscation of over $33,000 in labor costs, along with the deletion of historical documents off of the public-facing Town of Beekman website, raises ethical concerns to me, as it should for you, residents. I'll close it by reiterating, in 2017, the supervisor labor cost again was listed as $62,357. In 2023, it is listed as $20,436, officially. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an old saying that goes like this. You get what you pay for. Thank you. This is my second appearance in 20 years, so 
nice to see you again. Um, first thing I wanted to say is uh, it wasn't so packed 20 years ago, and I wanted to compliment all of you as a former so social studies teacher. It's nice to see democracy in action and a, what do you call it, an active citizenry. So I'll hope to see you at the polls because I'm a poll worker. A um, couple of things. Uh, all right. I wanted to say thank you for a couple of things, uh, mostly to the highway department. Um, a few months ago, there was a storm, and it was very windy, and lots of uh, we call it the branches and trees were knocked down, and my road was blocked uh, for the better part of an evening, but it was also dangerous because a lot of the branches ended up on wires, and I was really concerned for how long it was going to take. But the highway department was there the very next morning, and they quickly cleared the road, cleared the debris, and they did a, a wonderful job. I was really thrilled at what they did, and I wanted to thank them for that. Um, in addition, for the first time in 20 years, um, they repaved my road, Lime Ridge Road, and I wanted to say how much we appreciate it, because uh, you know, uh, anything new is, is uh, what do you call it, well taken care of, and, and uh, it certainly you know, speaks to how much we care for our neighborhood. Um, so thank you for that as well. Um, the issue that I'm really here for is because, and since I spoke to the same issue 20 years ago, but what has changed in 20 years is that when I first moved here, um, it was mostly older people like myself living on Lime Ridge Road. In that 20 years, many younger families have moved in, and there are lots and lots of younger children. Um, for those 20 years, there has been, from April until about now, uh, a free-for-all like uh, Indianapolis Speedway Everywhere. on Lime Ridge Road. Everywhere. Everywhere. I'm sorry? Everywhere. Everywhere. Take the road. Okay. Well, I didn't know. I Get the motorcycle. Pop the own wheelies. And, and so I <laughs> add to that. But I mean, I only know my own road. And it's virtually straight away all the way from 216 to Beekman Elementary. There's a couple of curves, mostly it's a straightaway. And for that six months, um, there are uh, four by fours, motorcycles. Um, I've had construction people working on my property who remarked to me that they couldn't believe how fast people were going on a school road, because Beekman Elementary School is at the end of my road, or at least part of it. It's towards the end of my road. And, um, you know, and I hate to think that the board's going to sit around, any board, whether it's this year's board or whenever, that they'd sit around and wait until some child got killed because of speeding on Beekman Road, because now there are many more children. Um, there's literally a three-year-old living across the street from me, and in two years he'll be going to Beekman Elementary. Um, so my, my request that you consider is for some speed bumps to be put up on Lime Ridge Road given that it's a, a school zone. And it would be nice if people did the right thing and just abided by common sense and consideration for others. But then again, if people did that, we wouldn't need laws. Um, so given the fact that people aren't doing the right thing and that people are racing down our road with wild abandon, uh, it seems to me a small price to pay to put some speed bumps up to keep them from doing that. I'd be glad to slow down to go over the speed bumps on my own road so that no child would get uh, killed. And um, other than that, I, I would appreciate it if you would speak into the microphone, as I'm trying to do, because I, I couldn't hear most of what you were saying earlier this evening. So if you could think about doing that, I'd appreciate it. Other than that, thank you all. Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia Delulu, Delulu, no Cynthia, okay, okay, I make a motion to adjourn. Um, was there anybody that walked in late that didn't get to say what they wanted to say? Cynthia? Oh, yeah, Gina. I'm sorry, I passed. Go ahead. Sure.
Saturday uh, between 7 Gina, and 2. Gina, you can go next. Um, just, um, you, I, everybody can go. Here, Boy Scouts, Troop 77 is always after Beekman Dump Day. They hand out uh, refreshments, coffee. They're there in the morning. Something they've done all the time. Tony's allowed them to be there. They'll be there this, this, uh, this Saturday morning. If, you, if you're going to Dump Day, please support them. That's one of our biggest uh, fundraisers for the year. So, you know, say hi to the boys. We've got some new young kids in there. We're getting a lot of, we're aging out. See a lot of older boys. One, my grandson's one of them. But they got some new kids in there. So support the uh, Beekman '77. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she's just, Gina was going to go next. I'm sorry, and then you can go. Okay. So Gina Moore. So I wasn't going to speak, but then I just signed up just in case I changed my mind. So I have a question. If we, the taxpayers, come here with questions, when do we get those answers? What's the obligation of the board whose salary we pay to answer our questions? Is there a rule about that? Instead of spending all the time that we do amending all of the minutes every single time, why don't we make some time to answer some of the questions that we all have? Number two, I notice that not one single person has stood up yet against Tony. I find that very interesting. Three, the audit. Shouldn't we get a printout of the audit is that not something we do? It'll be on the, the It's going to be, website. it won't be here. So I noticed that he brought up there was a grant of COVID for 800000 I had heard rumors that it was for small businesses. Is that not the case? Was that money it, it for was, the town to it allocate? Was, it was for the town to allocate. And it wasn't for small businesses at all? There were a variety of things, and they changed it. Who's a they? Of the, the, the state? The federals. They changed it, um, the regulations, several times over the years since COVID in terms of what it could be used Because that was quite a bit of money left, so I just want to make sure it's being well spent. And I noticed the one thing the, um, Tom Smith, the auditor, said was that the highway fund is doing very well. I thought that was interesting. So he didn't say that about any other department. That was it. Uh, thank you. I wasn't able to sign in. I, uh, I got out of work late. So my name is Joe Barbieri, I live at 42 Gabriel's Path. I just wanted to say that if you drive around through Dutchess, you'll notice we have the best roads in this, in this county. The roads are in great shape. They're always plowed. Tony's on top of everything. So for that, I vote no. But I will say this. I find what happened at the September meeting, I watched it online, it was disgusting. Shame on you for allowing that to happen and saying that he was the speaker. Shame on you for allowing that to happen. Somebody needed to defend him. To allow somebody to get up and speak to a woman like that is disgusting. Absolutely, Absolutely disgusting. And you all owe her an apology. And I don't even know the woman. And I don't even know the woman. We live on the same street, but I've met her once. She was very helpful when I wanted to get a, a, a fishing license. But I don't even know her, but you owe her an apology. And I'll say this, I'm a, I'm a United States Marine, I served my country, do not ever, if you allow this to happen, never say thank you for your service to a service person, to a veteran, if you want to take away our right to vote. Never ever say thank you. Make a motion to adjourn oh, the meeting. Oh, okay. uh, Sandra Hughes, Dalton Farm. Uh, I will be voting no on Proposition 3. Um, everybody spoke so well. I, don't, I, I, I took it all in. But uh, the fact that you're taking or want to take my right to vote is, is unbelievable. But you can't take my vote when you guys come around and I have to vote for you. So in February, when you come around with your petitions, please don't stop by, because I will not be signing it, and I hope the rest of you stop. You have 12 months, so you have to stop it now. Okay, I make 
a motion to adjourn the meeting at 710. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye.